Today we are going to do some more exercises in combination series parallel circuits. We're going to get started right off the bat with something a little more complicated than we ended up with. I've simply added one more resistor to the mix and a voltage test point to go with it. So this area here is no longer zero volts, it's something higher than zero because we are separated from our zero volts by a resistor with current going through it. So we'll have to take that into account when measuring the other parameters. So let's put some parameters in here and do a circuit. Okay, here's our circuit. I don't want to tell you everything that's here. You can see it. But all we need to find is, what's the value of R3? What is the current through R3 and R4? And what is the voltage at test point 3? So pause the video and solve the problem. So there's 10 milliamps coming from the battery. It splits this way and splits that way. And that's 5 milliamps going this way. So how much current went this way? And it's obviously going to be another 5 milliamps. So that's our current through R3 and R4. Let's put that here. And now we can see that since these two legs have equal current, they must also have equal resistance. So if we have 2K here, we must also have 2K here. So here's a 1K resistor. And so what is this resistor? Well, if together they must be 2K, and this is 1K, this must also be 1K. Now that leaves us with the voltage at test point 3. And I think the easiest approach here will be just to go ahead and do it with Ohm's law. We have 10 milliamps splits up into 5 milliamps and 5 milliamps, and then comes back together, of course, for 10 milliamps back here. So if we have 10 milliamps going through a 1K resistor, if we don't know our voltage, we multiply. So what is 1K times 10 milliamps? If we have kilo ohms times milliamps, we get an answer in whole volts. So 1 times 5 equals 10. So there's 10 volts across R5. And of course, that's zero volts here. So if we go around against our conventional current, we go up in voltage. So we start at zero and increase by 10 volts. So the voltage at test point one is positive 10 volts. So let's check this some other ways to make sure we got it right. So we have 20 volts here and 10 volts here. So we started with 20, we lose 10, leaving 10 left over. So there's 10 volts between here and here. Now, if these two resistors are equal, they must have equal voltage across them. So we start with 20 volts and we lose 10. There must be five volts across each resistor. So start with 20, we lose five. Now we're down to 15 volts. We lose another five, we're down to 10 volts. So far, so good. Let's check this another way. Let's simplify the circuit a little bit and see how it works as a more simple circuit. So here I have the circuit that is simplified where these two resistors are combined into a single resistor. We have 1K plus 1K, that gives us 2K. Now this 2K is in parallel with this 2K. So 2K in parallel with 2K, what's the total resistance there? So two of the same value resistors in parallel have half the resistance of either one. So these two become together a single 1K resistor. So this circuit acts like three 1K resistors in series. And if they're equal resistance, they should lose equal voltage. So we start with 30, we're going to lose 10 volts across each one. So we start with 30, we lose 10 down to 20, that matches here. We lose another 10 down to 10, that matches here. And then finally down to zero volts. So everything matches up. Okay, same configuration, but some different unknowns. We need to know the value of R4. The total current is missing, and the current through R2 is missing, and we are missing the voltage at test point 2. Pause the video and solve the problem. Okay, let's see if there's any place in this circuit where there's two parameters that can give us a third. And right off the bat, I can see that there's 50 volts here and 30 volts here, so there's 20 volts across this 800 ohm resistor. So 20 volts divided by 800 ohms gives us 25 milliamps. Now that we have the total current, we can figure out how much current is going through R2. Because if we have 25 milliamps coming here, it splits two ways, 
15 milliamps goes this way, that means that 10 milliamps goes this way. Now what's left? What's the value of R4? Well, we have 30 volts and 15 volts. Be very careful. We do not have 30 volts across these two resistors. We have 15 here and 30 here. So there's only 15 volts from here to here. So now we have 15 volts and 15 milliamps. So that can tell us the total resistance between these two resistors. So 15 volts divided by 15 milliamps gives us one kilo ohm, or 15 volts divided by 0 0.015 is 1,000. So we, now we know there's a total of 1,000 ohms between these two resistors. So if I have 1,000 ohms total, and this is 800, that leaves us with 200 ohms for R4. And that leaves us with the voltage at test point two. Probably the easiest way to do this one will be Ohm's law. So we have 15 milliamps and 200 ohms. So that's going to be 0 0.015 times 200. That gives us a total of three volts across this resistor. So we start with 15 volts here, add three, giving us 18 volts at test point two. Okay, let's double check that. If we have three volts across here, we should have another 12 volts to reach this 15 volts. So we have 15 volts plus three plus 12 equals 15. So let's see if there are 12 volts across this 800 ohm resistor. So we have 0 0.015 amps times 800 ohms. That gives us 12 volts. And so we have 30 volts here minus 12 equals 18. Okay, this is starting to look complicated, but let's see how bad it is. What we're looking for is the total current, the voltage at test point two, the voltage at test point three, and the values of R3 and R5. Pause the video and solve the problem. Okay, what's the easiest thing to find out here? Well, we have our total current coming in and it splits off one, two, three ways. So we see we have five milliamps, two milliamps, and one milliamp. So we add those together, our total current has to be eight milliamps. Now let's tackle the voltage at test point three. We know that there is eight milliamps flowing through this part of the circuit, so there's eight milliamps flowing through this 625 ohm resistor. So 0 0.008 times 625 gives us five volts. Start at zero, add five, so we have plus five volts here. Now let's go for the value of R5. R4 and R5 are in parallel. There's nothing between them, and they are connected together, two current paths, and so the voltage must be the same, and the currents must be proportional to the resistance. So we see that we have two milliamps going through 10K, and we have one milliamp here. So if we have half the current, we must have twice the resistance. So R5 must be 20K. Now let's tackle the voltage at test point two. Let's find the voltage across R4 and add that to the voltage at test point three. So we have 10K and two milliamps. Two milliamps times 10K gives us 20 volts or 0 0.002 times 10,000 is 20. So there's 20 volts between here and here plus five. That gives us 25 volts at test point two. We can test that by checking the voltage in this leg also because the voltage here will be the same as the voltage there that we add to that voltage to get our total voltage for test point two. So we have 20K times one milliamp gives us 20 volts plus five gives us plus 25 volts. So now we can tackle R3. We see that there's 30 volts here and 25 volts here so there's five volts across R3. How much current is flowing through it? Well, we start with eight milliamps and five milliamps went this way. So three milliamps went through R3. So five divided by 0 0.003 gives us 1.666K, which I've rounded to 1.6K. And if we double check this, we have five volts divided by 1.666K gives us 3.001 milliamps, which is accounting for rounding errors, the correct answer. So as you can see, I can make these problems pretty complicated, but as long as I give you enough information and you know the rules for series parallel circuits, you can calculate things out fairly easily. That ends our exercises on series parallel circuits. This is so important that I'll be throwing in an occasional problem on future lectures. 
we only have a couple of more fundamental rules to learn, then we can start adding other components and building useful real-world circuits. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible, and a big thank you to everyone for watching.